How many different rooms in my house can I use to shoot videos in? This is the basement, uh, the filthy steps. Hi, everybody. I just watched Butterfly in the Sky, the documentary about reading Rainbow. It's on Netflix now. I highly recommend it. It's a great retrospective on a great show. Wonderful look at the people who made it and the impact of it and the lasting legacy of a, one of the great children's television shows ever that I remember very fondly from when I was growing up. But I don't want to talk about that in this video. I want to expand on a thought I had based on something that was in the movie that was just sort of one of the incidents in the history of reading Rainbow that is covered in, in the documentary. And it's in 1995 when uh, the Republican majority took over the House of Representatives, the contract with America. Remember, those of you who are old enough to remember, um, Newt Gingrich became the Speaker of the House. It was the contract with America. It was the Republicans taking control of the House for the first time in however many years. And they played a clip of Newt Gingrich from one of his speeches after he, after, you know, everybody was sworn in and the Republicans had taken over. And he said one of his, one of his goals was to not just cut funding for the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, but to zero it out. He said, I would love to zero out federal funding <coughs> for the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. And what that reminded me of was that most of the things that Republicans and conservatives today in the year 2024 want to do are the same things they've wanted to do for decades. Nothing has really changed. I experienced this a few weeks ago in a, a slightly different way when I watched um, the film of David Mamet's play, Oleana. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about that at all in this video because I have a whole, a whole other video that I've already written that I'm going to shoot this weekend as I'm shooting this about Oleana. So I have lots of thoughts about that. But the main theme that connects it with what I'm talking about here is the things that conservatives, that Republicans, that people on the, the political right are afraid of or trying to make you afraid of or outraged by or concerned about or whatever, it's all the same stuff that they've always been worried about or concerned about or outraged about or trying to get you to be outraged about. It's all... The act never really changes. Times change, but Republicans don't. I think that's the main theme. 30 years ago, 30 years ago, they were talking about killing public broadcasting in this country. They're still, they still want to do that today. They've tried to do it a few times since. 30 years ago, and they were trying to do it before that too, but just it brought home to me that specific figure of 30 years. 30 years They've been trying to kill public television and public radio. It's been a boogeyman for them for as long as it's existed. And also what it represents, which is education, which is having an informed populace, which is teaching children to be tolerant and expressive and creative people. They're very threatened by that on the right because their whole political and social enterprise is contrary to that. You can't have a society built on conservative Republican right-wing values if people are sensitive and caring and thoughtful and empathetic. If they value diversity, if they value multiculturalism, then you can't have a society like the ones Republicans want to make because their society, their ideal society, cuts against all of those things. So any agent in the culture that would encourage that among people, especially among young, impressionable people, that would encourage children to be more open-minded, to be more embracing of differences. They've got to get rid of that. That's a threat. And I thought of it in the context of today's politics, not just in the sense of, oh, the things that they're worried about today are the things they've always been worried about, but I bring it up now because I just want to remind everybody, because things have been so particularly awful for the last several years, a lot of people just want to go back to the way things were. 
they have this vision in their mind of, well, before 2015, 2016, things were better back then. And in certain ways they were, but they weren't nearly as much better as we might lull ourselves into believing because things are so bad now and because the stakes for this next election are so high and things could get so much worse if we don't stop them from moving in the direction that they've been moving now, right? And I get that urgency, and that urgency is really important, and I hope everybody has a come-to-Jesus moment about that before November 5th, and we all go to the ballot box, we all go to the polls for this upcoming presidential election in the United States and do what we need to do to stop that from happening. I really, really hope so. But... We need to remember when we say, oh, we're going to go, like Joe Biden promised this in 2020. You know, we're going to go back to normal. We're going to go back to the way things were before everything went insane. Okay, but back then, things weren't all that great in a lot of ways, too. Back then, things still needed fixed. Things still needed changing. And fixing the way things are now should be about more than winding them back to the way they were six or seven years ago or eight years ago, right? We need to remember that. We need to remember, and especially when we're talking about the political opposition. Oh, remember how Republicans used to be before they went nuts, before they sold their souls to Trump? Yeah, they were exactly the same as they are now. Only they were better at hiding their racism and their misogyny and their xenophobia. They, they let it be expressed implicitly through their policies, not overtly through their political speeches, usually. Or at least when they did express it in their political speeches, they, they used a lot more, they used dog whistles that weren't as easy to figure out as they do now, as the ones they use now. But fundamentally, They've been the same all along. They've been the same for 100 years, the Republican Party. There hasn't been a major, um, in terms of like fundamental principles of the party, there hasn't been a major political realignment in this country for a very long time. The Republicans have been the right-wing conservative party for a very long time. I mean, their progressive wing died quite a while ago, all right? Their progressive wing probably breathed its last gasps during the FDR administration, and it was it was nearly dead back then. So the Republican Party has always been the right wing party. They have always been the people who didn't want the government to spend money, especially if it was money that was going to benefit people who actually needed the services, who actually needed help. If government was going to do something to actually improve the lives of people, oh, no, can't have that. That's not the Republican way. It's always been like that. It was like that 30 years ago when they tried to kill Reading Rainbow, when they tried to kill Mr. Rogers, when they tried to kill Sesame Street. It was like that in 2012 when they tried to kill Sesame Street. Remember, that was an issue for a little while during the Obama-Romney campaign. They keep trying to do this, and they've been trying to do it forever. So remember, yes, the Republican Party now, today in 2024, is a nightmare is awful, is a den of fascism and authoritarianism and, and ruthless, brutal, cruel racism and misogyny and xenophobia and transphobia and homophobia and vicious um, denigration of, of the poor and, and the most vulnerable, the most in need members of our society. They, they are as, as, as mask off vicious and awful and terrible as they've ever been, but their fundamental core values and their fundamental goals are unchanged. Today, they are afraid of the same shit they were afraid of 30 years ago. They are mad about the same shit they were mad about 30 years ago. That has not changed. And if we have pinned our hopes on trying to roll the Republican Party back to a previous era when they were more civilized and sane and reasonable, that's not going to happen. Because that era that we are remembering is a nostalgic fantasy. We need to remember the path out of the mess that we are in now is forward, never backward.